you know, I spoke real good yesterday, but today the boss man got angry at me and I just started cursing again. God can't trust you with his power. When you're always saying, he damned something. And you're always swearing. You're always saying, I could just kill you. Next thing you know, your mind's so full of thoughts of, of murder. You curse your wife, you curse your husband, you curse your children, you curse your city, you curse your family, you, cur you curse your car. That's why you're walking half the time. There are things that are in the unseen that are waiting for your permission. Hear that, hear that. There are things in the unseen that are waiting for your permission. As soon as you release them in your words, you're either going to receive life or death. Your wife might curse you out, call you the most nastiest names in the world, say, don't want nothing to do with you. That's when you stand up and you say, Father God, I thank you that my wife loves me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Your husband might be a drunk, stone, angry all the time, wastes all his money. Lord, I thank you that my husband is so full of compassion and love. He loves me, he loves his children, and he sacrifices, and he, 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 you bless him, Father God, because he's following you. Hallelujah. You speak those things that are not as though they are. You get ready to do something. Oh, I can't do that. Take a step back. Yeah, you can't. Amen. When you get ready to, to do something that you might think you can't do, shut your mouth. Change your thoughts. Tell your neighbor that. Change your thoughts. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's why the truth is the word of God. I grab the word of God because the word of God is what speaks to this thing right here. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I come to give you life and life in abundance. You get the word of God, you're getting Jesus here. And as you get that word of God, when you face that situation, those thoughts are going to rise up. Instead of negative thoughts, those good thoughts, amen. And you're going to see that those thoughts are going to release words through your mouth. You're going to begin, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And as you face those situations, as you begin to speak words of faith, watch how things begin to change. I think it's one of the most, it's, it's, it's one of the funniest but most blessed things I've ever seen in my life. There are, especially when I was in school, there were some women who they might have had like one eye over here, the other one down here, the nose over here. I mean, some women that just were ugly. But they would look in that mirror and say, girl, you look fine. And it didn't matter what I thought or other people thought, these women were always with, with cute boys. They were always with cute boys. Why? Because even though other people thought one way, she didn't allow her to think, herself to think that. Amen. Who cares what other people think about you? Who cares what, how, how negative they want to say things about you? What does the word of God say about you? He says, you're blessed. Do you know my father, he's the, he taught me this principle. He calls it the Jesus principle. Every 12 people that know you, there's one person that doesn't like you. And you know that person is going to be saying all sorts of negative things about you. I remember uh, I, even this week, I, but we hear it all the time. There are people in the community, they, they hear about this church and, oh, don't go to that church. 
You ask them why, they don't know why, but that's, you don't want to go to that church. I could care less what they think. All I know is we're blessed. Amen. Amen. Jesus is here. Praise God. So I'm going to speak words of faith. I'm going to look at that car that don't work and command it to work in Jesus' name. I remember this one evangelist. He was driving. He had no money. He had no money, and he was driving, you know, an old car, and he needed to go to the next city to preach, and he ran out of gas. He got water, put it in his tank. He spoke over it, and he asked the Lord to turn it into gas. And he drove another 100 miles and got to the location he needed to go. I could tell you story after story after story of faith where, we re, where men and women of God refused to believe what they saw. you got to refuse to believe what you see and choose to believe the word of God. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, I use faith for everything. Some, some of you have been thinking about losing weight. You've been wanting to lose weight. And every time you, you, you start, it's like, okay, I'm going to lose weight. And, you know, okay, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to lose weight. I am going to lose weight. So you wake up in the morning, all right, all right, I'm not going to eat. Uh, I'm not going to eat as much as I want today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to diet. I'm going to diet. And I'm going to lose weight. And all, you're motivated. Yes, I'm going to fit in, the, in these jeans again, these 1970 bell-bottom jeans. I wore these when I was in high school, and I've been holding on to them, you know, I was a size four back then. I'm a size 24 now, but I'm going to fit in these jeans again. And then, you know, you feel something in the physical, a little rumbling in the belly. And what's the first things we say? I'm so hungry. <laughs> and next thing you know, what started to be a good journey You're in line at the donut shop <laughs> thinking I want one of every one. <laughs> but if you, if you begin to speak words of faith, begin to speak to your body, body in the name of Jesus, I speak to you. I command you to lose weight in Jesus' name. I command you to desire good things to eat. I command you to have good, high level of energy to work out and exercise. I speak to my thoughts to be thinking about exercising. And you begin to speak every day over your body where it's your thoughts. Speak words of faith. Use faith for everything. Amen. And next thing, you'll be as good looking as me. Why do y'all laugh? I'm the best looking preacher in the entire Rio Grande Valley. Yeah. Amen. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to me. <laughs> I'm using my faith. You know, I started, I started you know, I, I, I like exercising and all that. And I, was, I, I came out of the, the, the weight room and a friend of mine saw me and he goes, man, Kevin, you're lifting, you're lifting good. And I said, yep, I'm on a, a mission. I want to be the, the strongest, the strongest physical, physically pastor in the entire Rio Grande Valley. And he looked at me, he goes, really? And I go, yeah, I should be there next week. Those guys are pretty weak right now. <laughs> they need an exercise, you know, <laughs> praise God. So the three ways, amen? Let me get back to the word before. I thank God I'm going off for on a trip. I can say whatever I want today and not have to deal with it until I get back, amen. <laughs> Pastor Veronica, you're gonna have to cast out all those bad thoughts. <laughs> the three ways to release your faith. What's the first one? Action. Actions. The second one? Giving. Giving. And the third one? Words. Words, amen. Praise God. Lift up your hands to heaven. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you that your word is more than enough for us, Lord. Lord, we don't need to have anything unusual or different. All we need is the simplicity of your word. And Lord, we choose to believe your word beyond everything else. Lord, we choose to trust your word beyond everything else. And Father, by faith, 
we will release our faith. We will release our faith trusting in you, believing you, you for everything. Lord, I ask you to encourage your people to speak to their hearts, to lead them and to guide them into greatness. We thank you, Father God, and we bless you right now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Can you put your hands together and give God praise?